Cuba influenced policies, critics say, are responsible for Venezuela's chronic food and medicine shortages and hyperinflation in the oil rich country. The crisis has driven millions abroad to escape increasing poverty at home. The Cuban regime is the intellectual author of the, of the uh, collapse in uh, Venezuela, and the refugees and the repression are a feature, not a bug, of that Cuban model. When he took office two decades ago, the late Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, aligned himself closely with Cuban leaders Fidel Castro and his brother Raul. They established a mutually supportive relationship in which Havana received an estimated 50,000 barrels of oil a day in exchange for sending 20,000 Cuban doctors and teachers to work in Venezuela. But President Trump says Cuba has also sent thousands of security personnel, military intelligence operatives and political advisors to help Chavez's successor, Nicolas Maduro, maintain authoritarian control and subvert Venezuela's democratic process. Cuba's foreign minister, Bruno Rodriguez, rejects these charges. It's a vile accusation from the president of the United States when he says Cuba has a private army in Venezuela. I order him to show evidence of this. The human rights group Amnesty International this year documented the Maduro government's widespread use of security forces to murder, detain and threaten political opponents and suppress growing public protests. The U.S., along with over 50 other nations, have called for Maduro's ouster for rigging last year's presidential election, and they have recognized opposition leader Juan Guaido, the head of Venezuela's National Assembly, as the country's interim president. The Trump administration has imposed tough sanctions that seize Venezuela's oil assets in the U.S. The U.S. this week also increased sanctions against Cuba and threatened to reinstate the suspended Helms-Burton Act to allow Americans to sue for property in Cuba that was seized during the 1959 revolution. National Security Advisor John Bolton cited Cuba's role in usurping democracy and fomenting repression in Venezuela in a Twitter post on Monday to justify increased sanctions. Trump's critics say his anti-communist strategy is more about appealing to Cuban voters in Florida, a key state for the president's possible re-election bid in 2020. Trump, in his calculations, he was looking to run for re-election, and Florida is a swing state, and you have a constituency there that wants to overthrow this government, and there's no doubt about that. Even many conservative supporters of Trump's Cuba policy concede that many U.S. allies supporting Maduro's removal are not likely to back a wider effort against Havana. Brian Patton, VOA News, Washington.